I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. You're looking gorgeous as ever. Thank you. I, I came, I came, I tried to come prepared. Thank yeah. you. I am no makeup today because honestly, by the evening time, I'm just kind of like, so I'm going to play around here so I can look at least halfway as decent. <laughs> it's completely fine. Okay. I'm ready. Yeah, so can you hear me I just want to you. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Perfectly. Perfect. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Perfect. So I just wanted to, um, hi everyone, everyone's checking in. Um, how do you prefer to be addressed? Jewels on the run or diamond? Um, diamond is fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Kate, nice to meet you, Diamond. Nice and to meet you. I am so excited for this me conversation. Too. <laughs> me I, too. Like, as you know, downtown, don't waste no time with negativity. It's a safe space. We're all about positivity, lifting up humanity. And one night I was, you know, as everyone is, quarantined inside. And DJ Khaled is one of those lives that I watch for, like, you know, because he just gives always great vibes and great energy. Right? Yeah. And I see he's doing fan love and he calls in this young lady. And I'm just going to be honest with you. It was great, everything, DJ Kellen, and I want to talk about it. But the part that resonated the most with me and why mm -hmm. I really want to speak with you today is your passion behind what you were explaining. You weren't even letting the fact, yes, you were excited, but you weren't even letting the fact <laughs> that DJ Khaled, you're like, no, these kids in Africa, they need to get fed. So, uh, <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are we doing? What are we doing? Like, that was your energy, and I fucking loved it. So, <laughs> what do you, yeah. like, do we start there, or do we start with just what made you decide to want to help people somewhere in the world that you don't live? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Kids. So originally, um, I mean, our ancestors come from Africa. So I've always had like a close connection with the continent of Africa. And when I started kind of getting into traveling, um, I noticed that out of everywhere else in the world, there was always a bad image portrayed in Africa compared to everywhere everywhere else. Like when you go online, when you go on, you watch the TV, there's just always this like negative persona. And, you know, I'm the type of person that, you know, I get curious and I, yeah, you say things, but I want to see it for myself. And I felt like when I went there, First, I started off in South Africa. When I went to South Africa, I noticed that pretty much everything that was online was just, I don't want to say it was a lie, but it wasn't the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And I got to see a completely different side, and I wanted to bring that to the world. Even just an example, like when I said I was going, so many people were like, oh, my God, are you going to be safe? Do you need these vaccines? Are you going yeah. like, to have Wi-Fi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all of these crazy questions yeah. and yeah. i'm like i'm but like they don't want to expect we can they have no idea what we've seen on exactly. tv exactly so i kind of want to be another outlet um a positive media to portray africa which is why i say i want to change the narrative of africa so that way more black americans the point is to inspire black americans to want to go to be curious to to want that to be their vacation spot because just an example, when you think about, you think about Paris, right? You think about the Eiffel yeah. Tower and you're like excited. It's you're insane. like, oh my God. All these beautiful things. Exactly. That, yeah, like, yeah. And I've been to Paris before, but you're like, oh my God, Paris. And it's just such an amazing place. I want people to feel the same vibe for different places in Africa because it, you, you get beaches there, you get everything that you get everywhere else, but that's not the image out there. So I want to go in there, get that image out there so that someone's like, you know what, that's going to be my next vacation spot. That's where I want to go. That's, that's the image that I want to put out there. While doing that, of course, in many places in Africa, there are poverty, just like it is here in America. Um, there are a lot of struggles. There are a lot of government. There's a lot of, a lot of corruption. There's a lot of things that happen everywhere else in the world. But if we were to pinpoint all the negativity in America, then America no would want to come to, nobody would want to come mm -hmm. to America. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of want to be that, that outlet, um, to, to change how Africa is viewed. 
So let's scale it, let's scale it back a bit because yeah. your story is just so interesting. Mm -hmm. And I love to just meet women of color that are just doing positive things. See, even show the younger generations behind us that like, it's possible you don't have to fit into a certain stereotype. It's not like before when we were, we were in school and we had to pick a certain career to like be successful. Now you have roles like influencers and mm -hmm. you know, just so many different avenues you can get into. But what made you decide everyone, well, I won't say everyone loves to travel, but everyone I know loves to travel, right? So what made you decide to even start traveling and getting into YouTube and before even starting this journey? So I've been traveling way longer than I've been on YouTube. I've actually only been on YouTube for about five months now. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm a new YouTuber. <laughs> you are but so I'm... amazing at it. Like, really. <laughs> Thank <would> you. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really new at YouTube. Um, I had been traveling long before then. I actually started off um, back in 2014 at a... Um, and um that and, and actually the first place that I've ever traveled to the first time I ever left the United States was South Africa so I I was a little biased was that, your I, choice? that was my choice okay. that was my choice so I was a little biased with you know it's not like most people they go to like you know they go to like the Bahamas or something I went all the way to South Africa and I fell in love and I haven't stopped going since then so I kind of got into YouTube honestly because of a lot of friends and family. Um, a lot of friends and family was like, oh my God, like you should record your journeys. And people would ask yeah. me questions. People would be like, well, how do you do this visa? And, and, and what are the recommendations that you, that you have here and there? And I was like, you know what? I should just like create a YouTube so that way I don't just help my friends and family. I actually like, you know, put the information out there. Maybe someone can actually, you know, make use of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I that's how I got that. on YouTube. I love that they convinced you to do that because then we wouldn't be able to see Zimbabwe <laughs> and all the beautiful work that can be done out there. Yeah, right? exactly. So speak about that spark inside yourself. Like, not everyone gets up and say, you know what? This is a nice place. Let me find a way to get back. Yeah, so actually, it actually didn't happen like that. Um, but what happened was I went to Zimbabwe um, and I wanted to see how the education system worked. Um, I went to the school, and when I went into the school, I noticed a young lady, she didn't have the school fees, and they turned her away. They said, you know, you can't come because you don't have the school fees. And it, it just triggered something inside of me. Like, I was like, I, I, I can't believe that they're just going to turn the girl away. She wants to learn. Everyone deserves to have a right to her education. Like, how can... How can they just turn her away like that? Yeah. I also understood, you know, the school and I understand yeah. the whole system. But yeah. so I was like, you know what? No, she's coming to class today. So I, yeah. <laughs> I paid her school fee. But at that moment, I had no idea how much it cost. Yeah. And then when I found out it was at the time, it was three U.S. dollars every every uh, three months. And three they were raising U.S. dollars. Yes. And, and then they, they turned her away from school for three well, over there, that's a lot of money. Over there, that's a, that's a lot of money. So for her, you yeah. know, her family couldn't afford that. Yeah. So, and then they were raising it to six U.S. dollars. So if people couldn't afford three U.S. dollars, six Imagine. U.S. dollars, yeah. they're not going to be able to, yeah. a lot of kids are not going to be able to go to school. Yeah. So I, when I found out the price, <laughs> oh I was like, what? I, was like, give me a, I said to the principal, I said, give me a list of all the best students oh. that you have who cannot afford it, and I'm going to go inside their villages, and I'm going to bring them back in school. Oh. So it wasn't something that was planned. It was just something that happened. I seen you it in your front head. of my Yeah, it was like God wanted me to see that, so that way I can be like, you know what? No, this is wrong. Like, let's, if I can do something, I'm, I'm going to do something for this young, young woman. But you know what? I know I can afford six U.S. dollars every three months, so let's just that's throw some more kids up in there. Yeah. So that's what I did. Then I started going into the villages and I started telling the families and, you know, you'll watch it on my YouTube, like families are getting so emotional. And I then, tried. 
Yes. <laughs> and and then, then I'm a big suck. But <laughs> at the same time, this was reality. This wasn't like me watching the notebook or something. Yeah. You know, this was yeah. real life. And for us, well, I'm not sure for you, but for me growing up here, like in Canada, you never have to pay for school until you go to post secondary school. So it's like, what do you mean you can't go to school? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And when most people, it's so funny here because most people here take education for granted mm -hmm. and they don't, um, like we, we get education. Everybody has, everybody goes to elementary school. Everybody goes to junior high school. Everybody goes to high school. Mm -hmm. That's given to people. Mm -hmm. And so for a seven year old not to be able to go to school because their family can't afford it. I just, I mm -hmm. thought it was so wrong. So, mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, it was uniforms. They didn't have uniforms. They didn't have books. Um, you know how in the U.S. we usually have, like, school buses yeah. that go back and forth. They yeah. walk to school. So they're going to be walking, like, two miles to school without any shoes. By the time so you get I... you're so hungry and tired. And... <laughs> exactly. And a lot of them go throughout the whole day because when I went there, I bought snacks because I bribed a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I bought snacks. And some of them told me, like, this was, like, their first meal of the day. And it was, like, a candy. <laughs> So it's real. It's very real. And they walk, most of them walk like uh, two miles to school every day with no shoes. So I went, I, I went, uh, I was like, you don't have a uniform. You don't have school. All right. We're going to the store. I went to the yeah. store. I bought a whole bunch of books. I started giving everybody books. I went and I got, I got people uniforms, getting you some shoes. I, I was like, you know what? This is what we're going to do. And originally, I just posted it on Instagram, not thinking anything of it. The first time that I did it, I didn't record it, which is why it wasn't on YouTube. Because mm -hmm. at the moment when it happened, when the young girl couldn't go to school, I wasn't like, get the camera, get the camera. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't yeah. like, get the cameras. Like, I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. But then I posted it on social media. I posted it on Instagram. And my friends and family was like, oh, my God, how can we help? How can we help? And I was like, well, you know, I'm still in Zimbabwe. Um, send me blase blase. And then we'll help, you know, we'll get some more kids in school. So they did. And then that's when I started recording me going to the villages and telling their families and getting them uniforms and getting them shoes and getting them books and things like that. And then out of nowhere, this just like blew up. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea Honestly, that it was going to be like that. I, I've been reading a couple books and like, I just find anything that's connected to just genuinely doing something yeah. for to better like humanity and people and like you it like you were just so selfless like you were just in the moment like this is crazy all right take this give me a list like you know what I mean things like that okay so um you know things like that you just really we need people like you in the world like, I, I would not have known of what was going on in Zimbabwe. As crazy or corny that may, may seem to people, I'm not looking yeah. for that. Yeah, of course. Right? But I saw a beautiful Black woman on social media talking to DJ Khaled, and she had such passion. I'm like, okay, well, let me check her out. Which, what is she talking about? So definitely downtown. Um, we are making a donation today. So that mm -hmm. should be reaching you today, or if it hasn't already. And our team will definitely get that over to you because – Children are the future, and especially now um, when kids can't even finish their school year, they're stuck home, they can't graduate, they can't experience all these things that we have possibly gotten to experience as young people. Heroic, literally. Yeah. Like, like, where does this fearlessness come from you? Like, do you feel like it was, like, the way you were brought up that helped you to become... Well, well, it's it's kind of complicated. So you know, I you can talk I, to me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you so much for all of your kind words. Like it really means a lot to me. And I think that you know we have to emphasize on you know just kind of what it is, and that you know black kids don't get the same opportunity as other other races. And I think it's important to be able to give them the same opportunity so that way they can make they can have a fair future just like the rest of us and most of these kids their future is already planned for them just because of the lack of resources they have so me being an american and me having these certain resources or the voice of something like that i want to be able to give them the fair opportunity so they can become doctors and lawyers and and whatever they whatever it is that they want to be and not have not have a future chosen for them because they didn't have a right to a basic education. Now, 
with that said, <laughs> I'm gonna answer. <laughs> I'm gonna answer your question. Um, well, I don't. I, I don't really know. Like, so my background, you know, I, I did grow up in New York in the foster care system, and unfortunately, you know, I, I've had a pretty rough road. And I've always said that I didn't you want it to display. <laughs> Wow. I've always said that I didn't want it to determine who I am and, and, and make me bitter or, or you know, just, just turn who I was. And I wanted to always spread positivity. And especially, you know, I was a kid who didn't have anything. And I've always wanted someone to do what I do for me. So if I can be that person to do it for somebody else, to give them the future, to feel like someone cares about them, then I want, I want to be able to do that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I love that. Um, <laughs> I see if, let me know if this question is okay with you, but I see yeah. a couple of people ask me about the option of traveling with you. Mm -hmm. I guess this quarantine left is over. Is that something that you incorporate into this experience as well? If they want to like travel with you to where these donations happen mm -hmm. or are these people just being weird and they're trying to... <laughs> <laughs> So I'm very open to it. I'm actually planning um, a trip to Zimbabwe with uh, two of my sponsors. They sponsor two children and they want to meet the families and they, so after you sponsor a child, yeah. um, what I do is I give you the name, the date of birth, the, I give you all the information, the, uh, the village, all that stuff. So, you know, these two young ladies want to meet the family and want to, you know, meet their student and things like that. So, uh, you know, obviously with coronavirus, we kind of don't know when that's happening, but we are planning of that in the mix. So if you sponsor a kid and you want to meet the family or you want to just be there to help me find village, because trust me, it's, it's not easy. So, sometimes, like, you walk a long way. I remember when I walked from the school to one child, I was like, they do this every day? Right? <laughs> But, uh, uh, <laughs> so, no, girl. <laughs> so, Get me an Uber. <laughs> right now. <laughs> so yeah. I would love for people, if people want to travel with me and people want to go out, go out to different places, then I, I, would, I would love it. Right now I'm starting off in, um, I'm, I'm doing most of the things in Zimbabwe, but I would like to, you know, there's other places in Africa where kids are not going to school. I would like to be able to venture off to those other places. Um, I'm also well, working you, on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'm all, just about to answer that. Well. <laughs> yeah. I'm also um, working on a couple different other projects as well. Um, my next move is I'm hoping whenever the borders open up to go to Ghana and I would like to help with the aftermath of everything because a lot of people are really su uh, suffering and not being able to eat. And I'm also working with a doctor to be able to help with the malaria crisis and giving out nets to schools. So I have a lot of things like in the mix that I feel like people would really be able to relate to and have a heart to and stay tuned on my YouTube and things like that. And you know, I, I, I you've gained a, for, a forever fan as long as, you know, this is a family because I just get such positive energy from you. Like, like, even like if you told me I'm selling lemonade in New York <laughs> or something, like, I'd be like, all right, girl, how much you need? <laughs> how many lemons do you need? Like, you just bring that positivity, like, and that's a great feeling to have. It's great to know that there's still warm people yeah. out in the world and not everyone is just so cold. Right now in the world, I feel like we need we need healing, we need warmth, we need compassion, yeah. we need empathy. Yeah, you know, yeah. you can't force those things. Yeah, and it's not honestly like it's not just me. Like, hopefully, I inspire other people to do something kind for somebody else. You know, like you don't need me to be kind to other people. You can be kind to somebody else as well. Um, because the more positive that we are amongst each other and the more that we realize that all of us is just a human race and we can all help each other, you know, the world can be a better place. Yes, it can. <laughs> it can. It can. And place. Have you ever, I may, I may be showing my age because you look young, very I'm young. I'm 25. <laughs> Stop this. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't have guessed it. I wouldn't have guessed it. Um, have you ever heard of the movie Pay It Forward? 
Oh my god, I've, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. You need to watch that movie. I'm I know gonna watch it. Now. Your jewels on the run, and you haven't watched <laughs> that movie. But tonight, you need to watch that movie. It is like so. Every time I cry watching that movie, and it's like pretty much along the cusp of the energy you're bringing to the world. I'm gonna so, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation everyone's kind of been like waiting for and we touched on it earlier you know you see the request come in is to drink out the <laughs> what the fuck do you do <laughs> how was that for you that was insane that i i was so nervous i was like shaking i was like you were i was like oh you my god were. i was all over the place like i was like like pretty still <laughs> Somebody in my friends and family was like, you made me dizzy, just sit still. I was at <laughs> home on my couch like, oh my god, this girl didn't know it was Catholic. I, I was excited. I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. It was so real. But I, I know that I had a couple minutes to be that voice. And I wanted to... I wanted to spread that message and I had no idea that he would respond the way he responded. I had no idea that he would be interested. I had no idea that he would reach out to me. Like I just, I had no idea of any of this stuff, but I knew that someone was listening. And as long as someone was this listening, they could at least get a piece of the message that I wanted to deliver. And that's all that was important to me, even if I got nothing out of it. So I was, you know, I, I was preaching for the Zimbabweans. Uh, I was here with them. <laughs> But I was everywhere. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think you were. The only part, it was, like, when it came to the website, you were like, I got it. But I, I just, I, and I, I know the adrenaline was just going. It's like, what do you do? But you were prepared. You were on it. And I'm hoping that, you know, it all worked out. And I just want even everyone here, like, tuning in and coming in and out, like, even if it's $6 that you can stand. Send. that's less than a meal at mcdonald's that's less than yeah. your delivery fee on uber or you know so we can definitely support and i made sure to put the link below so people can see it and donate it's very easy literally you click it you have different avenues because as i said downtown world don't waste no time with negativity we want to make sure we support a cause like this like and this is actually the first time we've ever held something where we kind of said donations are being accepted and please send them over instagram had the function and then now i see that they have taken it away because initially that's what i was going to do because this is something so important like imagine if this is someone you knew like your little cousin or your nephew or something and they literally can't go to school and sing twinkle twinkle little stars with their friend at recess for six dollars how often would they need that six dollars like Every three like, months it's a, per quarter. Three mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. literally, literally. <laughs> That's what I said. Like, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was mm -hmm. like, what? I just, the principal, went, give me a list and let's go get these kids back to school. <laughs> <Wasn't> <laughs> no that, hesitation. Yeah, was it that if you don't mind me speaking mm -hmm. on this, please let me know if you are uncomfortable. But um, it, would it, is this compassion come from you growing up in or being a part of the foster care system? 100%, of course. Yeah, because a lot of these kids don't have an advocate and I didn't have an advocate. So I, I've always wanted to be an advocate for someone else who doesn't have a voice. Um, and 100%, 100%, definitely. Yeah. If you if you don't mind if you don't mind sharing, how do you what is like a thing at the top of your list if you could say that is something that definitely helped you out and helped you make it out, what would you say that like one of those top things were? I would say my brother. My brother is the one who definitely helped me out. He he inspired me to go to college. He inspired because he he did it. So I felt like you know what, like, it's something that I can do, too, because we had the same background. So definitely watching him make something of himself definitely inspired me that, wow, like, I don't have to be a statistic and, and, and end up like every other foster child in New York. I can do something differently. And college is the one who, ex who, who exposed me to traveling. So. Same, same <laughs> for my, well, 
personally saying for myself, but most of my ideas of wanting to go outside of like where my family was from, mm -hmm. definitely college had influenced that for me. Yeah. Um, we do have a staple question here at downtown that we love to ask. Okay. So what is a recent um, situation where you felt like it was a negative situation or something that was definitely like just not it? And you found a way to just remain positive or you chose a way not to waste any time with negativity? Mm, my breakup. <laughs> Ooh, girl. Girl. I, girl. Let's Girl. I can't even speak. Can you see this? You're speaking to souls right now. <laughs> my breakup. 100%. 100%. Those are positive things that can happen after a breakup. Yeah, definitely. Like, don't even give it your time. Don't give it the negativity. Just blow up. So, but not for everyone that's like that. So, if you don't mind digging a little deeper, right? Mm -hmm. What was so negative that you felt like, you know what? I'm going to go this way. Or, like, what is something that you felt like it was just, I know that I can act this way to the situation, but instead I'm just going to do this instead and leave? Well, I, I think there's a lot of pressure when it comes to relationships. And, you know, I was engaged in the world and everyone knew that I was engaged and I had this beautiful ring. Um, and there's a lot of pressure when you are engaged to get married. And um, I knew that, it wasn't for me. I knew that I couldn't be the best version of myself with him. And it was a tough decision to be able to make in front of family members and his family and my family and all that stuff. Um, but I don't regret it. It was the best decision I've ever made. Um, and if, if you're not happy and you're not your true authentic self, um, then you should get out of it. And that was, that, that, that was my push behind my decision. And I'm 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 happy. I, since then, I've just been leveling up. <laughs> Let's talk about the glow up, okay? So after DJ Khaled, your ex went on to social media <laughs> and saw you speaking to LL Cool J. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm talking to my girlfriend because I'm literally like, <laughs> I am your girlfriend. <laughs> literally, like, girl, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Talk about it. Yes, yes. I always I'm... love to say, like, when God has something for you, like, no matter what people do, to try and knock it, whether they're doing it on purpose or not, mm -hmm. they can't stop it. Amen. I 100% Jules agree. Is on the run. On the run. Literally, <laughs> literally cannot stop her. Like, girl, I'm so excited to just see everything just unfold. Like, I'm really rooting for you. I'm <laughs> really rooting for you. I yeah. really appreciate that. I really so do. Doing it and doing it well. Like, yes. From? Like, <laughs> like, like, you just, it was like a lottery pick. Did you play the lottery this week? No, I should have. I should have. Really I, I should have. I should have. Maybe I would have won something. I should have. You should. Your numbers are hitting right now. Like, <laughs> what was that like being able to just even share that with him and let him know this is what's going on in the world? And he seemed into it. Like he's passionate. He was speaking on, you know, similar places going up. So, like, what was that like for you? With LO Cool J? Yes. It was. It was great, honestly. Like these these platforms and these celebrities is exactly what we need. We need people in power to I feel like sometimes people in power don't really realize what's happening on the downground. And these people are being able to expose that truth and for them to even listen to it is is very powerful for me. Even if they don't do anything with it, just just that they, they are now aware. So they, people can't say, I am not aware of what's happening because I just exposed that truth to you. And what you decide to do with that truth is your decision. But at least I've exposed it to you. You are aware. You know what's happening. And you do what you want with it. So it was, it was a privilege. It was a privilege. And I'm really excited and really happy that 
I'm able to use these platforms to expose that truth, to be able to let people know exactly, you know, what is going on. And hopefully they decide to, you know, go above me and, and, and do something. Because what's important is that kids are back in school. What's important is that people are starting to see that there's a different, there's different aspects of Africa and, and how beautiful it is. And they want a vacation there. And what's, what, you know, they want to feed people and they want to help with the malaria calls. And they want to, you know, that's what's important is the information, is the education behind it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when it comes to just moving forward and what you have envisioned for, um, first we can do it, Jewels on the Run. Yes. What, what is your vision moving forward for yourself? And So my vision is to continue to be a YouTube influencer. Um, I want people to subscribe to my channel, view, view my work and things like that. And I would like to move to Africa. I would like to backpack Africa and see which country I would like to move to. Um, ho hopefully marry an African. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> and you know, start a life there and be able to contribute as much as I can. Um, of course. And while of course, you know, um I am a traveler, so I do travel around to different places, not just Africa. So I would like to go to Asia and Europe and all of these places and you know, but my main focus is Africa since it's portrayed in such a negative light. I want to turn that image around. Yes. I yeah. agree. And I remember um I believe it was last year they had was it the return home? The year of return. Year of return. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Were you a part of that in any way? Or were you able to participate? And I was like, 2020 this year, and I'm <laughs> missing me. <laughs> Girl, didn't we all have plans for 2020? Yes, I had a whole, if you look at my YouTube, I had a whole thing for 2020, but 2020 is not over. I <laughs> have... Like I know for a fact that things are going to turn around and regardless, even if we are staying home, it's a blessing to be healthy, alive and, and, and living. Um, but yeah, the year of return, I did not participate in the year of return. That was in West Africa. I was in Southern Africa. Okay. But I was going this year. This year was the year I was supposed to go. <laughs> and... <laughs> and it, didn't, it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet, but the year is not over. It's not over. It's not so over. So out of all the countries you visited, um, I don't know if you know, but I had a chance um, in, before to speak with, earlier this year, to speak with the first Black woman to travel to every single country in the world. Yeah. And um, she's amazing. Just she is. Amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. Um, and I was scared shitless. Probably how you felt speaking to DJ Khaled. Because I was like, what do you ask the woman that has been to every country? Every country. <laughs> what do you what do you what do you discuss? I don't want to seem like an idiot. Like she knows <laughs> she knows so much, but I am so humbled by her giving me that privilege. And now it's just in tune. I get to speak to Jules and she's out in Zimbabwe. And like you really do need to connect with her actually because I follow um, her. Oh, I you do? do? Follow, yeah, oh, I do follow perfect. her. Perfect, perfect. She's like, she is so sweet. So definitely, I'd love to see you guys collaborate. That's what I was going to say on something. That because, would be amazing. But yes, yeah, so out of all the countries that you have visited, <laughs> what are your top three? Ooh, and why? top three. Number one is Zimbabwe. I I'm biased. <laughs> um, <laughs> my number one is Zimbabwe. Ooh, um, top three. I was hoping you said one. Um, <laughs> like spice it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, the second. Wait, does it mean that you love any other country less? <laughs> right. It's very true. The second would be South Africa. South Africa. South Africa was actually my number one until I went to Zimbabwe. Okay. And then my third one would be Jamaica. Yeah. I love the food. I gained about 50 pounds there. I love the island. I love the culture. The rock. Oh, my God. I just, I just get in the vibe when I think about Jamaica. <laughs> so, that I love that. 
Because <laughs> you can feel the spirit. I can. <laughs> That's actually my family background. So wow, look at that. Def- see, we got the flags going already. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, so there's oh man, I had a blast in Jamaica. No matter where else they travel, like I, I can agree with you. So yeah. and it's been, you've definitely been to way more places than yeah. I have. So if it's still at the top of your list, like there's no place like Jamaica. Oh my god, everything about Jamaica is amazing. Do you possibly see yourself ever trying to possibly branch out and do work over there, or why any not parts of the world? Why not? Yeah, why not? The sky is the limit. Why not? I, like I said, I look at people as the human race. It doesn't matter where you're from. And if I can help a person, that's all that matters to me. So it, it doesn't matter. Jamaica, Nigeria, the, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it's from. As long as if you need help and if I can help you, I'm going to I'm going to be able to do that. It doesn't matter where you're from. But yeah, I would love to. Why not? Go so are you, planning, <laughs> are you planning on... I know I don't want to get into your content um, too much in terms of like breaking news, but is there any other aspects you're planning to share on your YouTube channel or like what can we look forward to? So there is a major announcement coming soon. Um, that I you felt should look for. <laughs> you okay. you're trying to I'll get it out of something. me. <laughs> you're trying to get it out of me, but there is um major like a, a, a major content coming soon and a big announcement that I think a lot of people are going to be happy about. But you will have to stay tuned on my YouTube for that one. Oh, I'm subscribed, so I'm <laughs> I'm watching. I'm tuned in. Now, um, on my personal account, um, mm-hmm. another um, live that I've been hosting with one of my beautiful friends, Alexis, is a game night. Okay. Um, a bit more mature audience, but you're 25, so we're all good. Uh, <laughs> but it was just a way to um, organically raise spirits and just with my friends, we would have game nights anyways. And now we can't see each other. So I'm like, you know what? Why not do it online and see what we can yeah. come up with? So, if you're open to it, am I allowed to ask you some questions from that game night? Okay. This is a little bit of fun. I won't, <laughs> okay. I won't, I won't put you in, um, what is the word I'm looking for? In harm's way. All right, let's do it. I'm you're, ready. you're safe. But I am going to start off really, really, I don't know if I should do this to you. <laughs> What's the rules of the game? I'm just answering the question? Yeah, so the first okay. The game is Would You Rather. My apologies. What, okay, Would You Rather. Okay. Ooh, rather. Okay. All right. But I feel like, you know what? I'm going to ask you because I ask everyone and no one's off limits. <laughs> okay. Uh, here we I'm go. ready. Here we go. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. As ready as I'm going to get. Okay. So, All right. and if you're mad at me, just tell me and we can eliminate the question. But I don't think All right. Me. I'll say okay. pass. All right, we good with that. All right, All right. so <laughs> would you rather cut off both of your thumbs or a baby's foot? Both of my thumbs. Without a thumb, without a doubt, yeah. Why? Okay. I have to ask if you're I'm, I'm, I'm not going to cut off a child's foot. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. I'm a mother. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's just, you it's just no way. I am. I have a baby. Yeah. One. <laughs> it's so adorable. I was like, I wasn't sure. But I was like, yeah. Every that kid is that keeps popping up is completely <laughs> the cutest like bundle of sweets ever. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What is, what is motherhood like for you? Because I've seen that maternal instinct coming right away. Like, nope, take my thumbs. Take my thumbs. Take them. Um, <laughs> it's fun. I mean, I feel like we all have it in in us, you know, that nurturing um, aspect of us. But, you know, she's my world, and I finally have my mother-daughter love. So she's everything for me. And I want to show her and, and, and teach her how to be kind and and be able – she travels also. Most of the time she's with me. And um, to expose that? her to different um, different aspects of the world. What is that like for you, being able to, like – you you not really having that growing up, and now you get to share that with the next generation of your family, your child, yeah. your child. Yeah. Like, it's like a what is that like for you? It's like a burst of love. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a burst of love. Like I just I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna try 
you know, for what I have to be the best mom I can. And there's no such thing as a bad mom. If you're present, you're a good mom. So, yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> Are you ready for the next one? I am. Let's go. <laughs> you bring the sillies out of me. Oh, okay. I'm glad. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do this one. Okay. So, would you rather drink... Or no, I won't do that one. That's kind of, it's, well, it's it's nasty, but I don't know. Go ahead, give it, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Would you rather drink a pint of boogers mm. or eat a family-sized chip bag of toenails? Oh, oh my God. Um, Maybe the toenails, just season it, fry it up. Mm. <laughs> Come off like caramelized yeah. onions. Yeah. Put some veggies on it. Try, try to make it. You know, maybe like maybe like a chip or something. Zhuzh it up, you know. Yes, I think I would rather do that. I love your creativity. That was the first time I got that one. I heard people say they would just because I'm thinking toenails. That's gonna like cut up my throat. Yeah. Just swallow it. I don't know. My my brain goes deep. <laughs> let's do let's do let's do another one. Okay. Would you rather be well no, you have a child, so that would help. Okay, ooh, I like this one. Would you rather have edible spaghetti hair that regrows every night? Okay. Or sweat maple syrup. And the maple syrup isn't sweet. Ooh, um, that's a hard one. Um, ugh. I don't know. I, I, I'm i going to say the maple syrup. I'm yeah. going to say the maple syrup. Maybe I can throw some honey in there. And, and you know, sweat sometimes is salty. So, mm. you know, I, 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 I would go You like the salty-sweet combination? Yeah, I guess, I, I guess, yeah, that would be my choice. <laughs> that would be my choice. Yeah. Yeah, because like I, I think I do spaghetti hair. Like I've had people in the past be like, I love pasta. Pasta is life. Make my hair spaghetti. I'll eat that every day. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, but, so both are horrible. Yes. Both options. Both options are horrible. <laughs> I wouldn't do maple syrup though, because it's so have you ever gotten maple syrup on your table? It is like so sticky. sticky. Yeah, it gets like, sticky. Imagine having to shower every day and get that thickness of red. Like, no, I'm good. Give me yeah. spaghetti hair. <laughs> yeah, I guess that that's a good point. That is a good point. So here's another good one. Jesus. Okay. Right. Um, would you rather find your true love or a suitcase with five million dollars inside? True love, any day. Mm. Yeah, any day. I'm a sucker for love. <laughs> Why? Um, I will find true love because um, I would assume he's my true love. So he'd be my husband. My husband. If I'm on my deathbed, my husband would be there, not the money. Mm. And that's who you. You know, I, you can't buy true love. So if that's something that I have and it's authentic and it's real, we can. You can always make money. Always. So. And, um, from young, my mom is a nurse. Shout out to all of the healthcare workers, frontline yeah. workers, essential workers. We love you. We value you guys. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay. And um, everyone else is choosing true love. True well. love. I love that you guys are participating. It's awesome. True love. <laughs> <laughs> and being around, because she's been. A nurse for over like 25 years so from young I've been around seniors it's not something that's like new or like ill to me I just love speaking to seniors yeah. and that is something you find like yeah. regardless of whatever's going on if you have those senior couples where it's though you know there's no factor of money in there yeah no not at all it keeps you it keeps you alive I mean one of the things that you that you find, which I think is just so intriguing for me, is when I go into these villages um, and there's poverty and stuff like that, they are still so happy. 
Mm. Just, just the joy, the love that you feel. And it's because of love. It's because the kids, they love each other. The, the, the parents, they love each other. Like, you know, the sisters, they love each other. And that's something that you don't really find in most places. And I think if people, I think if people um, value what they love more, then the rest will come with it. Money will come with it. All that stuff will come with it. But uh, true love any day. Any day I would choose true love. So if it's okay, I have two more questions. One okay. of the way you rather and a last one. Because I don't, I know you're a busy lady. So I'm really grateful for the time you've given me and I don't want to put you. Um, <laughs> would you rather a eating one or a thinking one? Say it one more. Uh, uh, say it one more time. Would you rather an like an eating type of one or a thinking one? A thinking one. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Got you. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. But I feel like I know the answer to this. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So, to end it off on it, would you? Or that is similar to the other one, but. We'll do this one. Would you rather die in 20 years with no regrets or in 50 years with many regrets? Oh, um, oh, right? It's a thinker. Um, they say. I would say I would rather have 20 good years. Mm. Yeah, give me give me a good 20 years because as uh, you know, you 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 die peacefully knowing that you've made a name for yourself, you've done something, you've given back. So I'd rather have no regrets and, and live a full life for 20 years because sometimes people you know, they see five years has passed them by because maybe they've done nothing with it or they, you know, feel like, they just feel like they've, they've have all those regrets and sometimes that, that can get to you. So I would rather have a good 20 years knowing that I put everything into anything that I have touched and, and, and die peacefully. <laughs> I love that. And I feel like you're doing that right now. I'm trying. Right Hopefully, now. I don't die in 20 years. <laughs> no, God forbid. I'm not going on wood. Or bed. And, you know, I just love this space that we're in because look at this room. Everyone's like, no regrets, good memories. Yeah. It's just such a positive energy in here. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for playing this game with us. So, my last question for you tonight, uh, Diamond. Oh, you're so amazing. I'm not letting you go. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Thank You're you. not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna. We're gonna smother you with so much love. Oh, you can really never is. have. So, you can never have too much love. Um, we another staple question here, and it's mm -hmm. the last one. Is you have the four elements: water, fire, air, and earth. Mm -hmm. Which element do you resonate with the most, and why? Mm -hmm. Wow. You have to end with that. Okay. Um, I have you thinking a lot today, Jules. You, you, you do. You do. Um, but in a good way, right? Ooh. Tell me one more time. Would you like me to say mine as well? No, no, because I want to be biased. So okay, that is repeat, true. repeat it, so repeat it. The four elements are earth, water, air, and fire. I'm stuck between two. But I feel like you can represent. Um, Do you feel like people could ever represent or resonate with more than one? Yeah, I feel like I can. You could be our first. Um. I'm gonna say air. Ooh. I'm gonna say air because without air, there's no life. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Answer in. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are. A lot of people are saying water, but the thing is, is if there's no air, 
you there's no water but um yeah that was hard that was really hard that was a hard one what's yours now i want to know what yours is mine's was water okay what's your reason reasoning for it is because i feel like especially for someone like me where i've been through so much in life Mm -hmm. and similar to you you've been through so much in life and sometimes situations that people didn't expect us to make it out of. That's even how I broke this blog. Because I had to remind myself on a daily basis, don't waste any time with negativity. Yeah. Literally. And I feel like water is one of those things where no matter what surface it's in, no matter where it is, it's going to find any crease, any way it can get in to survive. Water does that. Yeah. That's a good reason. It's calming. It's powerful. It can just go with the flow. Like, there's yeah. so many things why I resonate with water. But air, I love that. I, like, I never, that was the <laughs> first time I've even gotten that element, number one. Okay. <laughs> and number two, I just love your perspective. I love your perspective. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful to have tuned into DJ Khaled's live that night and Aww. stumbled upon you out of everyone that I've been seeing. It's not something I do. Yes, I have this media platform. Yes, I have the website, but it's not something I do. Just following people that I see in celebrities' lives. I really resonate with what you do and mm-hmm. I'm rooting for you. And I want you guys to donate and to, you know, help her, fund her. Like, like, I'm just being real. You don't have to say it, Jules. I'm going to say it for you. This <laughs> the place is free. Corona is free. These kids, $6 every three months. Like, you can afford that. You can aff- I'm pretty sure these earrings were, like, like $15 at Walgreens. So there, there's two months in a little bit. Like, I can be real with myself. Yeah. So I have no excuse why I can't donate to Jules today. You don't have an excuse. And if you do, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be insensitive. Let's just all, each one, teach one. Pay it forward. Um, anything that you like to ask or say, ending, jewels, diamond, my whole <laughs> How many times do you get people just interchanging your name? Um, I get it all the time. So my name is actually Diamond Jewels. And Jules is where Jules on the Run came from. And I get it all the time. People, sometimes, some people call me Diamond. Some people call me Jules. It really doesn't matter to me. Um, I answer to both. Um, but Thanks what I would like to say, no, 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 not at all. Uh, what I will say is, you know, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. This is my first official like blog that I've been on. I was really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thank so you for <laughs> Of course. Like, oh so thank you for reaching out and just, you know, yeah. being supportive and just, you know, even listening and, and, and being a part of you know jewels on the run just it, it means a lot to me so thank you for being so positive and continue to be very positive with other people and it, it carries a long way and i support you um i want your blog to be girl you're gonna be, be blowing up we're gonna blow up together <laughs> i'm gonna be the cameras you you be with the children i will be the media with the cameras exactly exactly so i'm i'm all for it girl like we have we have sisters we have sisters and we have to make a name for ourselves in this world and i think it's beautiful what you're doing and of course anytime that you need me i'm here so reach out anytime thank you jules this is not the end for you but i know this isn't the last i'm seeing of you um I'm so proud of you. Like, I'm so thank proud you. of you guys. Thank you for tuning in today, Jules. I'm going to make sure to save this yes. and um, get it over to you. And thank you, everyone. And remember, don't waste no time with negativity. Don't do it. <laughs> Bye. Day, you too. Thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>